what's, uh, we see what's everyone expecting? Something. So, yeah, oh, getting wow. to the fifth. Apart from loads of towers. Uh, we're going to start off with Just Dance, so I might as well keep it muted. I guess they'll show off some Mirage. About to begin. Skull and Bones can get in the fucking bin. Ready? Uh, I, go. I just want... I want Beyond Good and Evil, as usual. I'm not going to get it. Oh yeah, the Star Wars thing looked cool as well. Potentially. But is, is it going to have... Is, the Star Wars thing could have loads of towers in it. As well. Oh my god, struggling. No, don't get my video banned straight away. Hang on. Turn the ducking up a little bit more. Why does it have to be so loud? Oh god, they are actually starting off with Just Dance, aren't they? Why do they have to do it every time? Oh god, look, it's really struggling. I think the poor thing is getting too hot. Or is it just the stream? Oh no, this could be bad. Look at on 720. Oh no. What is going on? Is this me? Do you think it's the... Oh, fucking hell. Oh, no. Okay. Muted. Every... Oh, shit in hell. Olympic eSports series? What? Has anyone else got a, a better, like, a more solid thing for it? Let's try, let's try Ubisoft's one. At least we're, we're not missing anything important. That's the main thing. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, true. It would have been the camera if um, if it was my PC. Izzy, how are you? I can't believe you just dance a fucking Olympic eSport, for fuck's sake. I picked the actual Game Awards stream. That should be solid. That's what I used for all the other ones. The one thing I appreciate with them doing this is at least they're getting it out of the way first because I don't get, I don't want to see it in the middle of something. But I can't wait for the new PC. I can't wait for the new PC and for the weather not to be... Uh, super bloody hot. Without sound, these people look like they want to die. Oh, God. <laughs> no, some people like to dance. I'd rather chop my legs off, honestly. But... You know, like you say, don't yuck other people's yums. Okay, this is going on too long, mate. Come on. 30 seconds, that's all you needed. We done? Okay, cool. Oh, never mind. Oh, fucking hell. Go away. Thank you. I guess this is a hint to what's coming up. the flags and stuff a ubisoft game really okay so we're starting with star wars oh no avatar okay i forgot this existed honestly let me know if it's too loud or not Breed. 
poisoned our world. Secure the perimeter. All threats must be eliminated. They took everything from us. From me. I was trained in their ways. Their technology. Their weapons. Things that a Na'vi should not know. And then one day, they left. Hell's Gate is under attack. Evacuate now. Kill all the Na'vi children. But before they did, our teacher saved us and put us to sleep. This is your only chance to survive. And there I remained for 15 years. Until one day, I awoke. And I was free. Free to explore my world. Is it first person? Free to decide who I was going to be. Free to discover what I was meant to do. Now you see what they kept you from. Your true home. Again. Don't let the Na'vi get in our way. Get rid of them. And I have a choice to make. I choose to protect my home. I'm not sure, Syrian. Okay, so that's in game. is like look at all this cool shit I can't do in the game it might it might be all right I think it'll just be all right 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 there's old Phil I think it'd be okay but it didn't look great from that did it all oh, right stitch hi there everyone I'm Jim Cameron the creator of Avatar and Avatar the way of water in developing both of these films, I set out to imagine another world, a world as rich and complex as our own. And we wanted the audience to feel as though they were really on Pandora, to dream with their eyes wide open, and to explore this world with our characters. And it's always been our vision to embrace technology to allow us to find new ways outside the cinema to immerse people in this world. Our friends at Ubisoft share the same ambition and the team at Massive have been pushing the boundaries of what's possible in games to bring a new corner of Pandora to life. So with Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, our creative team at Lightstorm has been able to share their insights with Massive's talented team, who are experts in creating living open worlds. Together, we'll be able to bring players to the Western frontier with new environments, That's... new flora and fauna. So I was characters. thinking Ian and an original story that coexists with the events of the Avatar films. We can't wait for you to join this adventure, and we look forward to welcoming you back to the world of Avatar once again. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, I want to be wrong, but... It doesn't Lisa, blow, didn't blow me away. As game director, I'm proud to be representing the team behind Avatar Frontiers of Pandora today and excited to share a sneak peek of what we've been working on. In this all new story, you'll set out on a journey of discovery to unravel the mysteries of your past, learn what it means to be Navi, and explore new parts of Pandora on land or together with your I don't think so. I don't think so, Syria, no. Our <laughs> mission is I didn't to hear that bit anyway. Where curiosity is rewarded. 
<laughs> this tangible and highly immersive first-person experience will allow you to closely connect to a beautiful open world, touch and interact with it, using your size, your superhuman strength, and your natural agility to gain the upper hand. As the Navi say, Sivako, let's rise to the challenge on December 7th. Until Are you going to show then, us extended gameplay? We're delighted to show you a glimpse of this adventure. So okay. prepare to lose yourselves in the beauty and the danger of the Western frontier. Thank you. To be fair, no one's really been showing off like proper gameplay segments the last couple of days, have they? So this is one good thing. No, I mean, the, the movie's, movie's all right. I mean, it's pretty, but it's, it's as shallow as a puddle. Welcome to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, a first-person action-adventure game that invites you to explore the engaging world of Avatar in an immersive open-world experience. Of course, it's open-world. I'm open game director, and I'm excited to reveal what's waiting for you on Pandora. Look at all the trees you can climb. The story of our game begins <laughs> when the RDA experiences I'll try not to make too many of those to jokes. Frontier. John Mercer, done to one death. of the leaders of the RDA abduct you and other Navi children from your home to teach you the ways of humans, hoping to mold you and turn you against your own people. But his plan is interrupted by the Battle of the Hallelujah Mountains, and you are put into emergency cryosleep. When you awaken 15 years later, you are a stranger in your birthplace. Knowing the dangers posed by the RDA, you set out to take them down and look to secure the help of other Navi clans. Initially, you're perceived as an outsider, so you have to reconnect with your lost Navi heritage to gain their trust. On your adventure, you'll find your own path as you discover what it means to be Navi. You'll explore new regions of Pandora, each with their own unique biomes. Yeah, I don't particularly care about where the movies go, really. Brimming with life and dense vegetation, in the shade of awe-inspiring floating mountains. Not enough that this I want to see five of them of the anyway. Ranahe, a clan of peaceful weavers who will guide you on your first hunt and on your first flight. The Ranahe will show you the way to the rookery where you can bond for life with your very own Ikram. The Ikram is a devoted companion that you can name, feed, and customize. Experiment with acrobatics and feel a rush of adrenaline as you dive from the sky and explore the open world of Pandora from the air. If you travel north, you'll get to the Upper Plains, an expansive grassland filled with contrasts and open views as far as the eye can see. The nomadic Seswa clan live here in symbiosis with gigantic beasts called Sakru. Earn the clan's trust, and they will teach you the art of riding dire horses. And further west, the mysterious clouded forest, where hidden in the mist... Looks nice enough. Nothing is as it seems. Here lives the Kamatiri, a clan of healers with their own dark reasons to stay hidden. RDA operations are threatening the balance of Pandora. They build facilities of all sizes to exploit resources at any cost, spreading devastating pollution. In the process, animals are hurt and poached. You'll need to stop the RDA from ravaging your home. And when you are ready, you will take the fight to them. As a child of two worlds, you can learn to master multiple combat styles. <laughs> your powerful instincts allow you to get an overview of the battlefield, mark your enemies, and identify weak points. Traditional Navi weapons are versatile and precise. You can use the longbow to hit long-range targets or the staff sling to set up traps. For a more explosive approach, you can leverage your human training and go for the blast of an assault rifle, a shotgun, or go bigger with the occasional rocket launcher. On foot, you can also rely on your incredible strength to take down amp units. Above the clouds, your Ikran will help you in aerial combat against the RDA. 
Destroying RDA facilities will have a tangible impact on your world. With the pollution removed, Pandora heals. You'll be able to harvest the best quality material again and craft better gear and weapons. You will also find ingredients to cook and make meals to get stronger. As you keep discovering what it truly means to become Navi, you'll improve your skills by connecting to Ewa through the Tarshu plant and learn from the memories of your ancestors. I was about to say the same, Skill actually. It's just, it's just Far Cry, isn't it? Of your character, <laughs> such as your natural agility to move through the world, your stealth approach when hunting or fighting, or the handling of your weapons and mounts. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a captivating action-adventure game I mean, you could say that about a lot of things, of like with guns and shit in it, but... You will be able to play the full story campaign in single player or with a friend online in two-player co-op. We invite you to explore this world of wonder. Become Navi and take down the RDA to protect Pandora. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bad thing. The Far Cry games are, are solid, but... It kind of looks fairly standard, doesn't it? Yeah, not not sold on that. That's probably that's probably a game to pick up, but maybe not. Maybe not. It's not going to be a full price game, I don't think for me. Let's go, chat. Let's get it, baby. You have some fun with it. Look at all that. Another gun. Oh my. Another one. This feels great. I forget the name of this one. It's X X something. Oh my. Oh! The country! I'm going crazy! I'm going back to mode! Can I connect my string penis thing to my co-op player? And does it support teledildonics? <laughs> That's in the uh, premium edition. I mean, it's it's just it's Call of Duty, isn't it? Oh, the, form, the Far Cry formula works, yeah. It's just kind of you've been been playing the same Far Cry game pretty much for the last couple of them, haven't we? X Defiant, that's it. I think that's the game. Oh, this game's fun, man. I don't mean, this game's great. I made some critical damage. What about you? So I just, I'm so excited about this. Gunplay game. looks more engaging yeah, in this like than anything we just game. saw in the previous game. I guess it has to be, though, doesn't it? Because it's a multiplayer game, so it, it has to be really good. Look, they have to put a fucking Hello, Sam everyone. Fisher skin in there just to Hello, fucking Hello. tease a blue ball, everyone. Uh, executive producer on X Defiant. Uh, what you just saw was a collection of live clips and reactions from players streaming our game during our closed beta test in April. Uh, and we've been absolutely overwhelmed by the amazing response to our game from players all over the world. Now, for us, community has really Is been. Is this the Spin Cell remake rumored? And we've had 28 public tests so far. It's be a reboot, wouldn't it? Surely. Being the largest, and of course, the first with no NDA. And throughout all of these tests, we've done our best <laughs> to listen and respond to the feedback of players. So thank you so much to the more than one and a half million players who have participated in those tests, and the countless creators and streamers who shared their footage and feedback right. about X Defiant. It's been rumored and confirmed for ages, now, but it keeps stalling and getting restarted. Towards the future. We are currently planning on launching later this summer. But before we do that, we will be holding another test to address some of the feedback from the closed beta. This open session will be uh, You missed Reese, Just Cause, uh, sorry, Just Cause, PS5, Just Dance, and Xbox Series uh, the Avatar and game, from and then June we've got this to June 23rd. This is a short test, but we are opening it to everyone to get as much feedback as possible on our new netcode, our controller tuning, and of course, to stress out the servers as much as possible. So if you have not played X Defiant yet, 
this is your chance. But let's talk about what's gonna happen when we launch later this summer. We will start with a six-week preseason that will have all of our launch content with 14 maps, five factions, 24 weapons, and much, much more. We then move into our year one content schedule, which is packed oh, with some nice. really exciting uh, content. I don't care. <laughs> brand new meta-changing factions, each with unique characters and skills, I'm sorry. 12 new weapons, and 12 new maps. That's one new map every month, all inspired by Ubisoft's amazing worlds. And I think you may really be surprised. This will probably be like go. most of um, Ubisoft's multiplayer really stuff, where year one is dog shit, but they keep plugging at it, away at it and it gets good FPS later on. Experience. Like Rez, uh, Resi, Rainbow Six. True to our community and to strive to make X Defiant the Weapons, best place yes. to compete. And have fun. Weapons and skins that I have to buy. Now, it's been quite the exciting. To get to this point. So thank you again <laughs> to all of the players that supported X Defiant so far, and for everyone who hasn't yet. Had oh yeah, the chance, is hyper? Is it Hyperscape? See you in game soon. Is that the one where you can jump on like all over the roofs and shit? Did they get shut down already? Now this looks sick. I am uh, I am down for this. This is the team that made Rayman Origins and Legends, apparently. Capcom's at 11, is he? But we're going to watch it in the Discord. I didn't really do. I didn't really fancy doing a stream for half an hour. The thing is, like this, this is coming out. Oh, does that mean the Sands of Time remake's dead, or? To have some more gameplay, please. Yeah, that looks sick. Hi everyone, it's so exciting to be with you today. About 30 years ago, in 1989, I discovered a great action-adventure game, both challenging my skills and respecting my cleverness. It was Prince of Persia. I am Munir Adi, game director of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. <laughs> Time has come to open a new chapter and to journey in legendary Persia, in an era where the laws of mortals were ruled by the laws of gods. You are Sargon, a fearless sword prodigy, the youngest member of a squad of seven elite warriors. I really like his design. Mortals. One night, Prince Hassan, sole heir to the throne, is abducted and taken to her hostile and cursed land, Mount Kaf. You and your brothers in arms are sent on a rescue mission. To Is that Zangief Hassan. in the background? However, this assignment will cast you straight into the lion's den. And it is here that you, Sargon, and the whole kingdom must prepare to face the greatest threat of your lives. This is your story. In Mount Calf, your destiny awaits. Okay, well, let me know if the refresh works. When entering Mount Kaf, your mission is clear. Find Prince Hassan and bring him back to Persepolis. However, 
Mankat becomes a prison full of hostile inhabitants. Now separated from your allies, you discover a grand citadel full of mysteries, where time flows differently. What is this sorcery? The past coexists with the future. In this cursed land, exploration is everything. This is a semi-open world. I don't want to see your face. Show me the fucking game. New powers. But to reach new areas, you have to master your skills and your sense of timing. A trademark of Prince of Man, this looks so good. During this epic journey, you won't be the only one trapped in Moncalf. Goddess and blacksmith to the gods. Some dwellers are willing to help you, while others are more reluctant. But Sargon is a swordsman like no other. Combat's looking good as well. He is a fierce warrior, known for being elusive, ruthless, and extremely skillful on the battlefield. Guys, what the fuck are you doing? Fueled by anger, he constantly puts his life on the line to perform devastating attacks. Time powers are back. Of but course. this time. What the hell was that? Not only in your hands. No! To face such a challenge, master a new side of these time powers. And defy gravity. By combining all these skills together. You can express your creativity to solve that, one cap. That kind of looks like it's going to make my brain hurt a little bit. <laughs> and execute brutal combos in epic combats. Like fatalities. And that's just a glimpse of what Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown, is all about. I'd like to thank <clears throat> Mentrix, who composed the in game music you are just listening to. And of course, my fantastic team at Ubisoft Montpellier. We cannot wait for you to get your hands <laughs> on the game. It releases on January yeah, 18, that, that looks good. 2024 on all platforms. Apparently there's Thank been a lot of... Um, and enjoy the rest of the show. A lot of people saying it looked like shit when they first saw it the other day. It's like... Fuck off, pricks. Is this Far Cry Blood Dragon? So I recognise that music. Hi. What? My name is Adi Shankar. I'm a TV and movie producer. You may know oh, me from God, are you doing Castle a fucking Media Blood Dragon at, like, animated series? Or one of my fan fiction shorts on YouTube. Seven years ago, I got a call from Ubisoft offering me the opportunity to adapt one of their... Uh, very, very, very serious franchises into an anime. But instead, I came back to them with a crazy concept inspired by the, the mood of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, don't all cheer this at once. This concept used Ubisoft's vast library of characters and remixed them into one delirious anime series that would become 
this love letter to the 90s, or at least how I remember the 90s. And to my absolute surprise, Ubisoft said no. <clears throat> Just kidding, they said yes. That's why I'm up here. Come on. This is the story of how the first anime series by Ubisoft was born. Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix. This show is many things. It's violent. It's a dystopian fiction in the spirit of the works of Aldous Huxley. It's a spoof. It's a satire. It's dark comedy. It's a love story. And as a descendant of Indian mystics, yeah, I can tell you it's the most philosophically conscious show <laughs> you've watched in a long time. The series was picked up by Netflix. It was animated by the renegade genius pirates at Bobby Pills Studio. And today, I'm very happy to announce that barring an apocalypse, which, which may happen, it will be released worldwide later this year. And that's not all. This is really I'm difficult to watch. I'm even more excited to share with you an action-packed, Easter egg-filled teaser trailer right now. You want to be entertained? Don't change the channel. It's a dead sec. Oh no, Demon Rabbids. A Assassin's Creed frog. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> uh wait, what's this? What's this one? Is this a mobile game or something? I mean, it looks mental. <laughs> I'll give it a go because I liked I liked Blood Dragon. This looks like Division. like division is it a new game or is it an expansion or You listen to this album grinding Scarlet Monastery in Eastern Plaguelands from the last two levels of Classic Wow, so it's old. God, Eastern Plaguelands. That brings back some bad memories. <laughs> It's Division, but what, is it a new game, or...? That looks like a mobile game. It 
It's a fucking mobile game. Called it. Hey, everyone. It's an honor for us to be here with you today. Oh, no. We're home free. Oh, no. Song Skull and Bones. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm. Oh, no. <laughs> Fucking hell. You still remember the original Division trailers? Are oh, you old? Unfortunately, Syrian, you are old, along with us. You've been waiting for this game for like 20 years at this point. I really hope you haven't been, Reese, because it's going to be a fucking disaster, I think. A kingpin was born upon the sea. There was meant to walk the land of pirates' life for me. I'll ask you, winding up the sails and speak to me. Well, why do I think it's going to be a disaster? Find yourself a wanton port at bottom of the sea. Along the shores of St. Anne to the eastern shore. Because they, they, they at this by this point, they're they're basically forced to make it. Because they made a deal with the, I think it's the Singapore government that they they were going to fund it, but they also have to make it. They're like contractually obliged to make it. And with how long it's been de delayed and whatnot, I can't see it being good. I mean, I'm going by how it looked when they showed it off last year as well, by the way. I'm not just saying it because they're contractually obliged, but... I mean, the song sounds pretty good. Sounds all right. Dawn's going to immediately put this on his playlist. <laughs> Yeah, the, the singing is actually not too bad. I, I don't really want to see it in a game showcase, but. There you go. Anno, did they not even show Skull and Bones? <laughs> they didn't even show any of the game. Was that, that wasn't a new uh, Anno though, was it? Isn't that the one that's already out? So Bronner's in, on year seven now. That's kind of crazy that's been going for as long as it has. Whoa, okay. I'm not going to play it, but that's cool. I thought, isn't... Isn't Skull and Bones meant to be out soon, though? Jet Set Radio in a game that I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> fuck. What a shame. It was, yeah. In Roller. Roller Champions? And then Master Chief and Arbiter in Brawlhalla? Rabbids. Just make a fucking Rayman game. A 
progressive inline stitch. I haven't heard of that for ages. This is the new crew, I guess. Crew mode fest, yeah. I didn't play the second one of these, but the first one was all right. It was kind of. It was it was a worse version of Forza Horizon. Wait, what was what? The Rayman thing? That's going to be DLC, like the last DLC for the new Rayman Rabbids game. Mario Rabbids game. How about some gameplay? Do you remember back in the day where like none of the real life cars could take any damage because the uh, car manufacturers didn't want it? And now they're like, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. But it probably does, but they allow a little bit of damage at least. Motorfest, eh? That sounds like the Horizon Festival. Like a lot like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you have guys. become incredibly Thank cynical, yeah. Five years ago. I'm very hard to impress nowadays. Are. Now, each month, millions of thrill seekers just like you are enjoying playing eager to see what's next. I am Stefan Bollet, creative director of The Crew. Ubisoft Ivory Tower, and do you have to climb it, that <laughs> tower to review? I'm sorry. <laughs> Today, at last, it is my pleasure. Yeah, Prince of Persia looks really the good. Of The Crew, Murder Fest. Our own new take on the action driving genre, a celebration for car lovers to share and experience car culture fantasy on the beautiful island of Oahu in Hawaii. No matter how you enjoy cars and driving on your own or with your crew, Motorfest has something for everyone. Motorfest, your portal to a medley of high octane experiences you choose how you like. What is going on with this guy? With your cars. This is what Model First playlists are all about. Playlists are truly at the heart of Model First. Want to immerse yourself in the most exciting worlds of car culture? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on with him? Dive into the legacy of the world's most influential automakers. <clears throat> Light up the night street racing scene, Japanese style. Sure. Unleash the cutting-edge power of electric supercars. And this is just a taste. For the first time ever, we leave the US mainland behind. Our festival has landed in one of the most breathtaking and vibrant places on Earth, Oahu. Let's find out why Oahu is the perfect playground for driving fun. Race through the city street of Honolulu. Barrel up. Black ash covered slopes. Adventure deep into lush rainforest. Or cruise the dunes at sunset with your friends. Opportunities for fun and challenges are endless. 
a unique playground like this goes for a profusion of vehicles. Choose and customize your ride. I don't have anything to say about this. It's one of the most this. diverse lineups ever. From past, present, and future. Recognize the latest from Lamborghini? I think so, yeah, I know. You are as thrilled as I for, am. I think for me, the issue with this game is that... So I really beauty. loved Forza Horizon 4. I played so much of that. Hey, and some then, of you have spent a uh, lot of well, energy. Horizon 5 was good. Collection, like, really good. I kind of had my fill with 4, so I you will be able to don't know if this would change my mind. If that makes sense. Motorfest for free. Thanks. So stay tuned for more news about the collection in port. Anyway, this could turn me off more uh, off this more is if this Andrew Tate gets out of the Bugatti. <laughs> Since the beginning of the year, thousands of players have tested the game and given us priceless feedback through the Insider program. Join the party, register now for close beta and share with the world your experience in July. From the entire team at Ubisoft, Ivory Tower, mahalo, thank you. Welcome to Motorfest. Enjoy the ride. All of these songs are going to get this entire video blocked. I mean, it looks quite pretty. The handling is going to make a difference, actually. I do wonder if they're going to go arcadey or if they're going to go like a sim type handling system. If it's arcadey, I'm more interested. Sure does look like a racing game. Of course, there's a billion additions. Oh, something I can't play. <laughs> Assassin's Creed, by any chance? Yep. I'll be looking forward to someone accidentally jumping into their TV. It says in the top right what game the game is. Okay, I actually missed that, to be fair. A Quest 3 is coming out soon, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, you just look like a twat doing that. Oh yeah, yeah, it will be backwards compatible. They'd be da daft not to do it, wouldn't they? I 
I guess we're about to see you in game now, Mo. I hope you enjoyed that first look at this exciting new way to play Assassin's Creed. Coming to MetaQuest this holiday, Assassin's Creed Nexus will push the boundaries of VR and let you <laughs> he become feels cool. the assassin. Does he though? You will feel what it means to parkour, fight, and be stealthy in new memories from three legendary assassins, Ezio, Cassandra, and Connor. I cannot wait to see our players feel the thrill of virtual reality in the Assassin's Creed universe. But there is more. Nexus is not the only game that will offer <coughs> new ways to play Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Codename Jade is our first open-world RPG game on mobile. It will take you to ancient China in a time of intrigue and conspiracy. But in this brand-new adventure, you'll experience the iconic Assassin's Creed gameplay for free, anywhere, anytime. I am glad to announce that you can register now for the upcoming beta. <coughs> Here's a glimpse of what you can expect. I don't want to play games on my phone, I'm sorry. Legacy. It's honoring those that came before us. They can make me Learning a VR system doesn't trends. make me want to puke, I'm so in. And played Resi 7 VR and was so sick. To illuminate yeah. and hold their stories to the light. It, it is a problem, it's... To see. You, because you don't necessarily get it if you always have motion sickness either, do you? Helps to guide and shape our future. Now it's your turn. So this VR seems to trigger to something in people. I think it's like a balance thing, probably, so isn't it? Heights. To step out of the shadows and into a vast world. To make your own legacy. It's kind of crazy how good phone games look now. <clears throat> Alright, let's see if Mirage is what people want. We've all been waiting for this moment. Assassin's Creed Mirage is a very special game. Designed as an homage to the first titles of the series that many of us fell in love with. Coming October 12th, Assassin's Creed Mirage takes the franchise back to its roots. It's nothing coming out in November Sarah, this year. Our narrative director for the game will come on stage to tell you more about Basim and his journey. But before that, let's watch our story trailer. Oh, Ever, Cry yeah, Ever Crisis would be good, but, like, but I wanna, I'd rather play on like a Switch or something than a phone. I want, I know you can get controllers and stuff, but I'd rather have proper controllers for a game like that. They're all avoiding the launch of your only fans. What are you doing? Mark it in your diaries, everyone. Tell Basim the story of the feather. Our tradition of the feather comes from Egypt. The feathers of the heron were dipped in the blood of the targets. The feathers forge our paths, remind us of who we are, who we can be. The Order has held dominion over men and their empires for centuries. Strike quickly and end this. Swallow Recognize her voice. Without complaint. Who is she to tell you when to strike? Everything you do serves the hidden ones. That is a strange kind of freedom. Uh, it's Afghanistan this time, isn't it? To walk the shadows broken, pour your pain into the brotherhood. We are messengers of justice. 
and not the final judges. He knows not what he is. Have you not wondered at your nature? Uh, Assassin's Creed is a series that our little doing. Is that some uh, Prince of Persia stuff that we can't see because you're fucking cutting away from the screen, you pricks? I feel like um, Assassin's Creed I kind of burnt myself out on. Like they made too many too quickly. So while they're good, I don't know if I can go back to them. What does it mean to be free? What must be sacrificed in the quest for freedom and justice the hidden ones fiercely pursue? How can you find your path and fulfill your destiny when you don't know who you really are? As he grows from street thief to master assassin, Basim thinks he has found a sense of purpose as a hidden one, working in the dark to serve the light. But his nightmarish visions keep haunting him, leading to more questions with no answer. In Baghdad, seeking the truth comes with a price. The capital of the Abbasid Empire. One of the richest, most diverse, and most advanced cities in the world is at a turning point of its history. Unrest is growing, a French company, seeding Kelly. a revolution against corruption and arbitrary justice, an uprising that will turn the tides of history and change the lives of everyone. Childhood friends, fellow hidden ones, as well as newly formed allies and enemies will shape Basim's adventure. But his horrific visions are the face of a struggle that he can only handle alone. There is a lot to look forward to in Assassin's Creed Mirage, and the best way to make you understand our unique Back to the Roots experience is to show you the game. In are they the going to show uh, we through, Red, we meet or whatever it's called? Right after the assassination, J Japanese his first one. main target, as he reports back to Roshan in Harbiya's Assassin Bureau. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, what a good shot of the, the crowd in the dark. Look at that, there isn't shit all over the screen, it's great. <laughs> Don't let him escape! Time to vanish. Get back here, dog! Looks really nice. You see, they've got a uh, filter for this that makes it look like Assassin's Creed 1. It's like a bluish filter to it. That was kind of a nice touch. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I am glad you are safe. Alhamdulillah. A first of many achievements to come, Basim. We should only hope. There's still much work to do. While our focus was on Al Ghul, Fulav quietly scouted the city for where we could erect more bureaus. I have found dwellings in three districts that are most unassuming. Ebid and Rebecca have arrived from Alamut and set off to Al Abbasia and Karh. I will make my way to Sharqia shortly. And I will join Rebecca in Karh where corruption is as common as the arid air. See Abu Jafar about some things he's been working on, then come find us. Gadgets. Have a look, Basim. I may have something that is of interest to you.
Resourceful as always. My thanks, Abu Jafar. Why can't I have all the gadgets now? So there's some kind of resource management going on. Judging by that. I'm sure this was coming out quite cheap, by the way. Comparatively. Unless it was a misprice that I saw. As usual. That girl who likes me said she and Ali's followers are trying to overthrow the prince. What madness! They will surely fail. Right in the bum. He is very pretty, yeah. I I I kind of liked the animus story, but yeah, it's just it's completely hey, dumb. Did they actually yeah. finish it or did it just kind of go nowhere? This feels a bit Prince of Persia-y. The sky is safe, my friend. Survey the area in Kidu. There is my target. It's like that fucking splinter cell uh, instant kill thing. Okay, see so your magic. Tell me what I wish to know. And no more need die this day. What was that? Like a mine? Oh, it's fart gas. Come on. I, I honestly don't remember, Ian. If I'm honest with you. Yeah, I mean, that looks like Assassin's Creed. Hello, 
everyone. So first, I want to start by saying thank you to all gamers all around the world. It's thanks to you that we are here today. You are at the heart of everything we do. And this feels like they're going into their last thing, doesn't Ubisoft it? Ubisoft teams around the world as well. I would like to say a big thank you. Your talent and passion are at the foundation of this fantastic lineup. So I hope you are all excited to explore the amazing playgrounds you have seen today. At Ubisoft, we are creators of worlds. We are also proud to partner with some of the biggest names in entertainment to create original stories in beloved universes. Now, I am very happy to welcome Julian from Ubisoft Massive to give you oh, a first Wars. look at Star Wars Outlook. And, oh, are we not going to get Beyond Good and oh, Evil then? You. Fuck's sake. Julian? Never getting that fucking game, am I? It's, it's gone. Calm, calm down. Do you want to see gameplay or not? All right, let's get over the speech and let's get to the gameplay. How about no speech? Star Wars Outlaws just gameplay takes place in a time of great civil unrest. Yeah, they've the still world. got issues, haven't they, Mo? As far as I'm aware. For some, this is a time of turmoil. For outlaws, this is a time of opportunity. As a cunning thief, K. Vess and her companion, Nyx, fight for survival every single day, relying on their skills and resourcefulness to get by. As they struggle to make ends meet, Kay and Nyx dream of the day that they will finally be free. But while seeking this freedom, Kay unexpectedly becomes one of the galaxy's most wanted. So to free herself, from the bounty that follows her, Kay will need to pull off one of the greatest heists the Outer Rim has ever seen. You open clock without the glasses. As they navigate the underworld, caught between criminal syndicates and vicious, ruthless villains, Kay and Nyx will manage their reputation by taking on risky contracts and navigating complex relationships all whilst avoiding oppressive imperial rule. Uh, it looks good, but I need to see what it plays like. Ken Nix's journey will take them across the galaxy through stunning, varied open world locations and the wilds of space. One of these locations is Tashara, a moon that features windswept savannah and ambering canyons. Carved into Tashara's striking landscape, the city of Miragana serves as a central hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> KNX will encounter several criminal syndicates that learn that everything is measured in the value of influence, reputation, or cold, hard credits. This presents an abundance of opportunities and dangers for a young, ambitious scoundrel like Kay. On behalf of Massif in Sweden, along with Ubisoft, ANSI, Barcelona, Bucharest, Chengdu, Milan, Montpellier, Paris, Shanghai, Toronto, and our amazing team, at Lucasfilm Games, it's our privilege to present to you this first ever look at Star Wars Outlaws gameplay. <clears throat> you're playing as like Han Solo sounds kind of cool, right? If you're willing to take the risk, the galaxy is full of opportunity. 
Thank you. Space drugs. They're really trying to make toys out of this thing, aren't they? Good boy. I want that fighter stripped for parts by tomorrow. On it. All right, next. Let's go get paid. That worked. He's the boss because he knows how to This is Splinter Cell now. This is your Splinter Cell. They take our credits now, but what stops them from stabbing us in the back? Looks really pretty. Next. Hit that button. Nice one. Hang on tight, little buddy. It's kind of BD1, isn't it? Just leaving. Okay, okay, we'll figure this out. Oh, my God. Shield. This is looking pretty good. Hey, Nick! Fetch! You get to grab you weapons as well. This is getting bad. Let's try this out. What are you aiming at? Evelyn's better with a grappling hook. It's the I rules. Think that went pretty well, right? Oh, these guys don't quit. We've got multiple um, planets well, then. They'll probably forgive me. Comforting. There's Jonta's hope. We made it, Nix. Hey, Andy. You're late, Kay. Doc is waiting. What? Are you worried? No. 
Okay. No, but you draw. What? Be careful. Tonka's a broker, not a friend. She can't be trusted. Who can out here? See you back at the ship. Round two and I still like my odds. Kvess. Back already. I told you she's fresh, but she's good. Who's this? Just a friend. Join us. Job was more complicated than you said, Danka. You lived. <laughs> Hey, he's on toys. They're investments. <laughs> Wait, we haven't met. Don't really know many of you. Stealing illegal contraband, running with syndicates. I could say you're a threat to the Empire. <laughs> But I won't have to, if you're smart. Thanks. But I'm smart enough to get myself out of trouble. You pay the tax just like everyone else. Whoa, kid. Let's just relax. You won't make it off to Shara alive. Maybe. We have reports of a fugitive in Jaunter's Hope. Move to apprehend. That Imperial announcement wouldn't be about you, would it? Uh, That's cool. Could be. Some cool I UI stuff. <laughs> Not the it wasn't clear from the Persona Empire. stuff yesterday. I love a good UI uh, aspect. So we get to fly our ship? We need to leave. Use Workbench. Yeah, no kidding. We do get to fly it. Seamless from planet to space as well. Well, relatively seamless. Are we good? Nothing on the sensors yet. Anybody Man, your sensors, sensors fucking suck then. TIE fighters on us. Got one. I feel inclined to remind you that we should shake the Empire quickly. Thanks, I'm working on it. I think I'm sold on this. ND, get us out of here. Stealing hyperdrive. Let's jump. Looks great. Like really, really nice. We made it. Hey. Got your new toy. So, where do we go next? Anywhere we want. They didn't give a release date for this at the Xbox thing, did they? 
Or did they? I can't remember. Enjoy, Izzy. Twenty twenty four. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. I'll uh, I'll give that a whirl. That's a lot. Fuck off. Oh, no beyond good and evil. Shit. I guess that's it. Uh, you're allowed to leave. It isn't. It isn't a, a concept in my mind because they've fucking shown it before. Yeah, Pr Prince of Persia and Star Wars there for me. Assassin's Creed looks good, but I don't think I can... I'm just burnt out on the series. I don't think I can go back to it. But otherwise, looks good. Uh, crew? I mean, Crew looks good. I just, I, like I said, I think I've been burnt out because of Horizon. And I don't know if that'd be significantly different enough for me to want to give it a go. Uh, oh yeah, Ubisoft Plus, everyone. It's like Game Pass, but less stuff on it. I think it's actually comparatively priced to Game Pass as well, isn't it? They, they, I don't think they've got any confidence in Skull and Bones because we didn't even get any gameplay. We just got a song. Oh, you get the premium edition. That's that's quite good, I suppose. How much is it though? Again, normally. It doesn't tell me. Reese, let me dream. I really Hi, want that game Emily to exist. Hi, my name is Emily Gonzalez, and I play k -Vess in Star Wars Outlaws. k -Vess is a thief. She's a scoundrel. She's really is good this, at... How long is this going to go on for? You know, she's charming, and she'll, like, talk to you, but she's already taking all your things. She isn't perfect at it, but she always seems to get away with it. Okay, I think Kay this is just really going to be extra uh, fluff. A bit of a jam. You know, she's don't, don't really need to see this. Plus, I've got a, to find work. I've got a finish anyway. Let's, uh, let's put some tunes on. There we go. Why would I sign up for Ubisoft Plus when everything is available on Game Pass? Um, because Ubisoft wants money. I just don't think it's... I don't think Ubisoft Plus is as good value, is it, really? Uh, but no, yeah, that was, um, I mean, that was nearly, what, like an hour and a half? That could have been a lot shorter. That could have been 45 minutes if they just cut out all this ch the, ch the chaff. Um, but yeah, Prince of Persia and Star Wars, I'm down for. Everything else I think will be good. I just don't think I'm going to be down for it, really. Um... Hey, at least they got Just Dance out of the way, as usual. <laughs> but no, yeah, I think, yeah, Just Dance not for me. Avatar looks like it's going to be okay, but not great. Um, crew looks good. Assassin's Creed looks good. Uh, there's, there's too much Assassin's Creed stuff, that's the only thing, maybe? Like, do you need a console game, a mobile game, and a VR game? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, 
I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about all of the stuff that's ever been released for Assassin's Creed and considering how long it's been out for, there's like 30 or 40 games over the space of like 20, uh, no not 20 years, 15 years. It's mental the amount of stuff they put out. So yeah, I think that's kind of a reason for my burnout at least. Uh, what else was there? Oh, there was a load of like DLC plans, wasn't there for stuff. Yet again, Rayman is a second-class citizen. Doesn't get his own game. But yeah, no, this this and Prince Persia, I, I'm I'm super down for. I think both of those are going to be solid. Like the Star Wars game doesn't look like it does anything majorly different. It just looks like it does it really well. And oh Christ, just, that's my fan gone. <laughs> While, um, you know, I might be a bit hypocritical saying, like, ah, oh, you know, if Avatar just looks like Far Cry, whereas this, you know, looks kind of generic as well. I just care more about Star Wars than I do Avatar. I don't really give a shit about the Avatar universe, but... Yeah. Should have been shorter, but otherwise pretty, pretty solid, wasn't it? Can't really complain about it too much. About some of the awkward, some of the awkward speeches, maybe, but I could have just been nervousness. <laughs> <laughs>